it looks kind of like chocolate milk in a lot of ways and you can just watch that billowing out into the lake as it mixes with the much clearer lake water. To collect a sample from a permafrost thaw slump such as this, all of this water and ice melts and collects a bunch of the mineral and sediment particulates and it travels down and it kind of goes out into this mud flat which is really difficult and treacherous to walk on. Oh boy. Careful! <laughs> Careful, yeah it's really, really treacherous and it's going to slowly make its way to a little tiny dribbling stream into the lake. So when I collect a sample I first go to that little stream which is usually just a trickle so I have to make a trench to collect enough water from that trickle. I can put in a pH and conductivity probe, measure the temperature, so get some of the physical characteristics that's in this water and then I have a eight liter bottle which I have to first rinse out just to make sure we don't have any residue from anything else. So I pour that in, rinse it, and dump it out. And then when I'm ready to collect, I use a smaller bottle to just collect water and pour it into the larger one. And that's the water we'll actually take home and analyze further in the lab. When you have a thaw slump like this, what happens is somehow permafrost gets exposed to sun and to heat during the summer and it melts, slumps away, and thus creates a sort of a chain reaction where as it slumps away it exposes more frozen material that's never seen sunlight or warmth for the last several thousand years and then that melts away too and what happens is you get a huge slump forming where more and more material just keeps falling away and falling away if you can see around here, it can be really a huge feature and can have a drastic effect on whatever is downstream of this material. In addition to that, I also walked over to collect another inlet to the lakes. It's not impacted by a thermokarst failure. It's a clear little stream. It's a deep enough stream that I can just submerge my bottle. Then I fill it with about eight liters of sample water, again, to take home and filter. So we're really interested in what's happening to the lake as this giant thaw slump continues to grow. There's a very, very huge amount of organic matter that's just been frozen in this permafrost for thousands and thousands of years. And what we see happening in thaw slumps such as this, that carbon, it melts out of the soil and gets released and then usually ends up in some sort of aquatic system like a river or, or a lake. So to understand that we've got to know everything that's coming into the lake and what's happening while it's in the lake and what happens when it leaves the lake. And then how it may affect the lakes that are downstream. This lake flows into another, which flows into another, which eventually flows into the Oxarcoya Creek, which will flow out to the Arctic Ocean. What's really remarkable about these slumps is how quickly they really do grow. In the course of this season alone, this has easily quintupled in size and dumped tons, literally tons, of material into this lake behind me. 